In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to perform a simple linear regression by using Microsoft Excel. Not only will I show you how to perform the linear regression, but I'll also show you how to analyze the outputs of the regression test. As always, please drop a like on this video if you do find it useful, and leave me a comment below if you have any questions. Now let's jump into Excel and get started. For this example, I just have two variables of data, weight measured in kilograms, and height measured in centimeters. I have these measures for 49 different participants and each row represents a different participant. So the first participant, I can see that they had a weight of 51.24 kilograms and a height of 167.08 centimeters. What I want to do is to perform a simple linear regression to see how well the measures of height in my sample can predict the measures of weight. There are many ways you can perform a linear regression in Excel, but perhaps the easiest method is to use the analysis tool pack. This is an add-on created by Microsoft to provide data analysis tools for statistical analyses. To install the tool pack, go to File, Options, then click on Add-ins. At the bottom, you want to manage the Excel add-ins and click the Go button. Then ensure you tick the analysis tool pack add-in and click OK. Now, when you click on the data ribbon at the top, you should see a data analysis button in a subsection called analyze. Now we are ready to perform the regression. To perform the linear regression, I will click on the data analysis button. Then I will select regression from the list. The first thing I must enter is the input Y range. This is the data for the Y variable, otherwise known as the dependent variable. The Y variable is the one that you want to predict in the regression model. Since I want to predict weight, I will select this column in the sheet by clicking on the up arrow button and then click and dragging on the data for weight. I also advise highlighting the label in the top row. Doing so will help when it comes to interpreting the results. I now need to repeat this, but this time I need to select the X variable, otherwise known as the independent variable. For me, this will be the height measures. So I will click and drag on this data and press the enter key once more when I'm done. Next, I will tick the labels option. This is because I highlighted my column labels when I selected the data. If you didn't have any labels when you selected your data, then you would just not tick this option. The next option called constant is zero is used when you want the regression line to start at zero, otherwise known as the origin. Doing so would mean there is no Y intercept in the model. Generally though, for linear regression, this option is not selected, so I'll leave it unchecked for this example. It is also possible to specify the confidence level for the test. By default, the results will return the 95% confidence intervals without having to change any options. However, if you want to use a different confidence level than 95%, then you can select this option here and enter a desired value. Since I only want the 95% confidence intervals, I will leave this option unchecked. For the output options, you can specify where you want the regression results to be placed. If you select output range, you can highlight where you want the results to be placed in that worksheet. The second option lets you place the results in a new worksheet, and the third option lets you place the results in an entirely new Excel document. I'm going to select the second option and call the new worksheet results. The final set of options concerns the residuals in the analysis. I'll leave all the residuals options checked so you can see what is returned. And I'll click the OK button to run the regression. Since I checked all of the options in the regression test, I have quite a lot of information that is returned. So I'll break down the output and go through each in more detail separately. In the first table called Summary Output, there are some regression statistics from the test. First up, we have the multiple R. This is the correlation coefficient between the two variables of interest. If you're interested to learn more about the correlation, then I suggest you check out my previous video on the Pearson correlation test clearly explained. Briefly, it is a value that tells you how strong the linear relationship is. A value of 0.65 in this case indicates a fairly strong linear correlation between height and weight measures. Moving on, we have the R squared, otherwise known as the coefficient of determination. To get this value, you simply square the multiple R value. The R squared value tells you how much variance the dependent variable can be accounted for by the values of the independent variable. And if we multiply this value by 100, we get a percentage value. So we can say that 43% of the variance in weight can be accounted for 
by the height measures. The other 57% of the variance is therefore caused by other factors, such as measurement errors. Next we have the adjusted R squared. The adjusted R squared takes into account the number of independent variables in the regression analysis, and corrects for any bias. Usually this value is only really relevant when you are performing multiple linear regression, where there are more than one independent variables in the model. Next we have the standard error. The standard error of the regression is the average distance that the observed values fall from the regression line. And what's useful about the standard error is that it is in the same units as the dependent variable. So here my standard error is 4.31 kilograms when rounded. This means on average my observed values were 4.31 kilograms from the regression line. The smaller the standard error, the more precise the linear regression model is. Finally, we have the number of observations. This is just the number of subjects in the test. So here I had 49 participants. Let me now move on to the next results table called ANOVA. The main thing you want to be concerned with here when looking at this table is the value under the significance F header. This is in fact the p-value for the regression model. To be able to interpret this, we need our hypotheses. My null hypothesis was that there is no linear relationship between the height and weight measures. My alternative hypothesis was that there is a linear relationship between the height and weight measures. And let's say my alpha was 0.05. This means I will reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative hypothesis if the p-value was less than or equal to 0.05. And the opposite will be true if the p-value is greater than 0.05. In this case, I would fail to reject the null hypothesis. As you can see, the p-value for this model was considerably lower than my alpha value of 0.05. So I conclude that the linear regression model is significant. Let me now move on to the final table of results regarding the coefficients. The first row displays the results for the intercept. This is the point where the line of best fit or regression line crosses the y-axis when the value of x is 0. The second row displays the results for the slope. For a simple linear regression model, the most basic version of the equation is y equals m multiplied by x plus b, where y is the predicted value of the dependent variable, weight in this example, m is the slope of the line of best fit, x is the value of the independent variable, height in this example, and finally b is the intercept. Using the information reported from our results, we can say that the predicted y value is 0.800264 multiplied by x, subtract 79.599. So in this example, if we knew a participant's height in centimetres, we can predict their weight in kilograms by using this equation. For example, if a participant measured 175 centimetres, the model estimates their weight to be 60.45 kilograms. Looking back at the coefficient results table, we can see that there are other columns which tells us the standard error, as well as the lower and upper 95% confidence intervals for the intercept and the slope values. You will also notice both has a t statistic. This value is used to compute the p-value. Again, to interpret this p-value, we need our hypotheses. In this case, the null hypothesis is that the intercept or slope is zero. My alternative hypothesis is that the intercept or slope is not zero. And as you can see, both values are less than my alpha of 0.05. This means that height is a significant variable that impacts weight in this case. So that's an overview of the regression model results. Let me now cover the other outputs from the regression test. If you selected to have the residuals option during the regression setup, you will have a table titled residual output. For each observation, from your data that was entered into regression test, you will get a predicted value of y based on the regression model. For example, if you look at the first observation in my original data, you will see that the participant had a height of 167.08 centimeters. Just like we did before, if I put this value into the regression equation, along with the slope and the intercept values, I get a predicted weight value of 54.10999 kilograms. This is what this column represents. Excel then does this for each of my observations. Then, using these predicted values, Excel can then calculate the residuals. But what is a residual? To understand this better, let me plot my data on a scatter plot. 
After performing a simple linear regression analysis, a line of best fit or regression line can be plotted. And this is based on the model that I explained earlier. A residual is simply the distance between the actual data point and the line of best fit. For example, this is the data point for the first participant. They had a height of 167.08 centimeters and a weight of 51.24 kilograms. And as we calculated recently, the predicted weight value based on our model was 54.10999 kilograms. And as you can see, this is on the line of best fit. The residual for this point, therefore, is the difference between the actual weight value, 51.24 kilograms, and the predicted weight value, 54.10999 kilograms. And this comes out at negative 2.867 kilograms when rounded. Excel then repeats this for the rest of the observations. If you also selected the residual plots option in the regression setup window, you will also get a graph returned. Here is my residual plot. This is a scatter plot of the residual values from the table I just talked about on the y axis and the values for the independent variable on the x axis, height measures in my case. Residual plots are useful to look at when you are investigating homogeneity of variance, which is an assumption of the linear regression test. What you are looking for here is a random pattern to the graph. There should roughly be half the number of data points above zero and the other half below zero. And there should be a vertical spread of the data points the further along the x-axis you go. If you selected the standardized residuals option in the regression options earlier, you will see a column called standard residuals in the residual table. The standardized residual equals the value of a residual divided by an estimate of its standard deviation. And you can think of these as Z scores. They are generally useful to look at when trying to identify potential outliers in your sample. Generally, any standardized residuals with a value greater than three or negative three is a sign that it may be an outlier. Fortunately, all of my standardized residual values are within three and negative three. Moving on, if you selected to have the line fit plots option, you will also see a scatter plot containing your data of interest. In my case, I have height measures on the X axis and the weight measures on the Y axis. You will also see another set of data as shown here in orange, which are in fact the predicted Y values based on the model. And these values come from the predicted values from the residuals table. If instead of showing the predicted values on the graph, you wanted to plot the line of best fit, which will pass through the predicted values, then you could remove the predicted values from the graph by right clicking on it and going to select data. Highlight the predicted Y variable in the legend entry and select remove, and then click OK. If you also wanted to see the line of best fit, you can select the graph and then go to add chart element, trend line, and select the linear option. If you also wanted to show the equation of the line, you can double click on the line, then in the format trend line options that have just opened to the right, scroll down and select display equation on chart. And as you can see, this is the same equation we looked at earlier. Finally, if you selected the normal probability plots option in the regression setup window, you will also see a table called probability output and a graph called the normal probability plot, which is a scatter plot of this data. The x-axis plots the percentile value ranging from zero to 100, and the y-axis plots the y variable data weight in this case. The normal probability plot is used to determine whether the y data fits a normal distribution. Essentially, what you are looking for is a straight line of data. And as you can see, there is a nice straight line of data for my example, which suggests the weight data are normally distributed. However, it's worth noting that the y variable does not actually have to be normally distributed when fitting a linear regression model. And I'll go into a bit more detail about the assumptions of the linear regression in a future tutorial. And that brings me to the end of this tutorial. You now know how to perform a simple linear regression test in Microsoft Excel and how to interpret the output of results. If you found this video useful, please leave a like. It really does help support the channel. If you've got a question, pop it down in the comments below. Also, consider subscribing for more weekly tutorials.